try to kill what he can. It looks like a tank does go down from that immortal fire. Immortals doing just crazy damage to those tanks. 50 damage per shot, and the tanks, on the other hand, only doing 25 or 10, actually, to those hardened shields. But the Marines able to take out the shields of the immortal very quickly when they're focus firing. These zealots moving in, trying to chop down whatever bio units they can. Looks like a marauder is going to go down. Morrow left with only a couple of tanks and just very few infantry units trying to finish off each player trying to finish off the army of the other. TT1 is going to pull some probes when he sees he's got a little bit of an advantage, so he is going to soak up some shots while these stalkers try and kill whatever they can. If he focuses this tank, that would actually be really good for him right now. He's going to kill the tank and not kill this marauder. He wasted a lot of shots on that marauder to end up letting him live in the long run. Looks like that Banshee's still uh, actually a new Banshee for Morrow. And now I think we're going to see some multitasking as he sends this Banshee in toward the mineral line and still has some forces up front here. He's got a lot of Marines and Marauders. I would not be surprised to see him try and split TT1's army here. Yeah, he is moving in. If you watch the minimap, he's moving in with just a few. Dan no, maybe he's not. <laughs> Sorry about that. But he is going to score some easy pro kills on uh, with this Banshee before the Stalkers can arrive. Instead of warping in more, he's just going to walk those slow, slow Stalkers all the way over to try and take out this Banshee. But the Banshee most likely is going to be able to escape just fine. Morrow did not attack the front. I thought he would, but as instead looks like he's pooling all his units toward the middle or actually closer to his natural than uh, I thought he would. You know, it, he actually was in a decent position there as TT1 did have to pull quite a few units or chose to pull quite a few units to try and deal with that Banshee. Looks like the Banshee will not be back for now. He's going to fly it back over toward his main army. He did get six probe kills there so, so we're going to check the units tab and see what that's looking like. It looks like Maro is a little bit ahead because he's got only one less worker but two more mules than TT1. So TT1 dealing with all this harassment and does not have time throughout the game to be aggressive at all. Morrow's basically on his front door the entire game, taking out that pylon there. So TT1 knows exactly where Morrow's army is. He's going to try and scoop around down here at the bottom, warp in some units on the other side of these destructible rocks. Let's see what he chooses to do. It looks like we may have a showdown here in the middle of Blistering Sands. Morrow looks like he's got more bio units but no medevacs anymore. Instead building another raven. Hopefully uh, he hopes that he'll be able to get enough energy to get another PDD out during this next fight. Those point defense drones soak up so many shots and uh, each shot consumes 10 energy. They spawn with something like 200 energy so that's a lot of time that these stalkers are doing absolutely no damage to the rest of Morrow's army and he can even stim and just drill down those uh, stalkers in the meantime but both players look like they are posturing a bit getting their armies sort of set up for another big clash in the middle or outside of TT1's uh, base as the case was earlier and Maro choosing to expand down here at the high yield he's going to break down these rocks very quickly with his bio units and build that command center right there probably just going to make it jump on over to this spot here later on medevac on the field now I think if I were in Morrow's position I would be getting more medevacs I mean this is a lot of investment here in these bio units TT1 still does not have anything with splash damage no high templar no colossi so this bio ball not seeing a lot of response from TT1 and that actually could be very poor for him he's only got two sentries to try and do some sick force fields if he is going to try and combat this huge bio army so uh, we'll just have to see how TT1 is able to cope with that he's got three immortals on the field now though to Morrow's four tanks uh, immortals are the hard counter to tanks unless he's got siege mode which he doesn't I'm a little surprised at that as well since TT1's really only shown tier 1 units and a couple of immortals so far I think a couple of sieged tanks up here on a cliff for example would be just fine against lots of stalkers and zealots um, but uh, you know Morrow's got lots and lots of marines 5 rows worth <laughs> he's got about 40 marines here on the field some marauders about uh, 10 of them for support would like to see more medevacs. Oh, Siege finishes there. He does start blasting away at these tier 1 units. All these marines and marauders stim and try to fall back as this point defense drone does go down and starts soaking up shots from the stalkers. It used all its energy extremely quickly because there are so many stalkers. These siege tanks now unseaging and following. All this biomass of Morrow just chasing down TT1 stalkers. TT1 knows he does not have the resources or the time to warp in enough units to fight off this huge remaining ball of units. He's probably kicking himself for not building High Templar or Colossi earlier, so good, good game tomorrow. Really like enjoying, uh, really enjoy watching his play and really like watching him play, so uh, I really like him and I really enjoy him. How about that? So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that game and be on the lookout for more throughout this downtime until retail comes out and after retail. Uh, there will be lots and lots of tournaments for me to pick and choose the, my favorite games from to share with you guys, so stick around. See you guys later. Bye-bye.